Coming up on TechZilla, geek measuring tools, and Veronica's search for the ultimate gaming headset continues, how to pick an uninterruptible power supply and the perfect tool to back up your email, and of course, a stack of your viewer questions. So heat up a pack of taquitos and open up that jar of salsa because TechZilla starts now. This episode of TechZilla is made possible by GoToMeeting, Gamefly, and Netflix. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Welcome to TechZilla, hands-on reviews of the latest tech and how to make the most out of the gear that you've already got. Whether you're a beginner or tech support for your friends and family, if you have a question about tech or the best end acid to hork down after an out-of-control barbecue feast, we got an answer for you. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Oh, my goodness. Hey, and if we don't, we'll track down someone who does. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody else watching, back from her whirlwind tour of Texas, a.k.a. Tejas, Ms. Veronica Belmont. Yeah, it was fun. It was all two days worth, unfortunately. I wish I could have been there longer. Exciting announcements, like game-changing Web 2.0. Oh, no, it was just social. all the stupid location-based wars. I mean, I call them stupid just because that's all anyone was talking about. Foursquare. But it was like Foursquare versus Gowalla versus, you know, Twitter adding location stuff. It was just like, that's all anyone talked about the whole time. So for those of us who... who who find the, the prospect of Foursquare, which is so that everyone who follows you can track you down in meet space. Yes, yes. Do you enjoy the Foursquare lifestyle? Yeah, I like Foursquare. I keep it very a very small group. It's not one of those social networks where I add every single person right. I know, because it's a little more personal. You know, you're actually telling people where you are physically at that very moment. Right. So you get that sense of like, ooh. <laughs> You know, if I haven't actually hung out with you a few times in real life, I don't really know if I want to want you to know where I am. Well, it's so funny. Awkward. Like, I know a bunch of people who who pulled away. I mean, it's not like it's a new phenomenon, but people mm -hmm. like like I, I was like trying to check a friend of mine's Facebook, and they're like, "Yeah, I gave it up. It was just like high school all over again, except I couldn't Facebook? hit the people." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have one friend that refuses to join Facebook. All of all, all oh, wait, of us I'm have joined. Facebook. You're on Facebook. I just haven't posted anything on my. Wall. Yeah. yeah, she's been on MySpace for years, but she refuses to join Facebook. Apparently she... She's, I don't understand why. It's like we're all on there. All her actual friends in real life are on there. <laughs> Wouldn't kill her. But anyway, yeah, that, that was the talk of the town was location-based the whole time, pretty much. Interesting. But we had we had a lot of fun. We had a party for GDGT, Ooh. or Gadget, as I'm supposed to call it now. And it was great. A lot I did of people the same showed up. thing. I was, I was saying, I was lectured. It's no longer GDGT.com. You can really use either, but, you know, it can go either way. But thanks to everyone who came out, and I met a lot of you, so that was a lot of fun. I found the coolest heat gun ever. What's that? This is a heat gun. I know, I know, I recognize it. I'm melting! Oh! oh. Yeah, you know, you know, when Roger and I had to go to Fry's because I'm either come home with nothing or everything that I've ever wanted except for what we actually had on the list. But uh, Tektron's heat gun, it's awesome. I finally have a heat gun mm -hmm. to melt shrink wrap that'll actually fit in my small toolbox. Instead of the giant, I'm not going to have to like crawl around. I'm rewiring my truck. I remember one time when my um, when a pair of my headphones, I think my ultimate ears broke. We tried to go into the uh, the the the, uh, the lab and and actually <laughs> shrink wrap the wire back onto it because we had it was loose. And we're like, oh, if we just get really a really small like, little shrink guy, shrinky tube. What do you call them? What shrink are they actually wrap. called? Shrink wrap. And then we put it on the thing, and it didn't. Then it wouldn't bend. Yeah. And then it didn't really work. It well, it was also enough. like it was, it, yeah, they're like freaking 22 gauge wire, and if you had. Yeah. Yeah. If it was small enough to actually shrink over the wire, it was too big, to, too small, big enough to, it was a nightmare. I love, I love, I love stuff like this though. It's like science in action. <laughs> it, it's like you know when you have those little pellets that you add water yeah. to and they go whoop and they grow really fast, or those little, those little things that you shrink in the oven. Shrinky dinks. You draw shrinky dinks. It's like that. It's like that. Yeah, I finally decided. I was just amazed because I wasn't looking forward to dragging my 300 watt heat gun around the inside of my truck while I'm wiring it. Oh. My truck's going to be unhinged. Yeah. It's going to be whack. In a good way, right? Oh, wait, no, it's wrong. Like, not way. literally unhinged because that sounds dangerous. No, no I, I, I have that to run like. That sounds like what you don't want your truck to be. I have to be able to support 100 watts, or excuse me, like, like 70 amps for the amplifiers alone, plus mm -hmm. there's a second 70 amp line going to the back of the truck. Hmm for like welders and mayhem and blenders. Fantastic, so how much does this little guy throw you bucks. back? 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Did you tell me that already? Possibly, oh. but it fits inside of it. I'm just excited that I finally like found a heat gun I can put in my small tool kit. Fantastic. So I well, thought I'd share it with all of you. <laughs> along with his twee little heat tool, I see Mr. Norton has a whole pile of tools loaded back here today. Yes. There's barely enough room to stand. What's this stuff? Okay, so, 
and I promise I Is that I will, a radar gun? That is a radar gun. You can buy a radar gun for, okay, look, I'm gonna talk about the radar gun last. Okay. This is, this is actually in honor of my obsession. Uh, Adam Savage of Mythbusters, mm -hmm. every so often he tweets out, he shows, he has this Pelican case with all of his measuring tools in it. It's insane, he just like built a brand new one, and he has every single measuring tool he owns is in one single Pelican case so he can travel with it. It's completely unhinged. And it's also, uh, it's just, you probably just saw a picture of a flash by on your screen. It's amazing, it's the nicest tools in there. And in honor of Roger and I going on a tech binge at Fry's, our local computer parts, electronic parts, tools, soldering iron, Blu-ray, CD-ROM, weird snack food, appliance <laughs> store. Fry's is a regional thing. I think they're finally down in like Texas and Vegas, but they're mostly a California thing. Yeah, it's pretty much designed to separate the geeks from the rest of their money. It is, un yeah, it's, it's like, like Vegas, you think Vegas is the ultimate money filter until you see a geek in, uh, in Fry's. I've only been to a Fry's once since really? I've lived out here. It's completely unhinged. Because there's nothing worse than finding yourself going home on a Sunday afternoon with like, a power supply mm -hmm. and an EEPROM programmer because you never know when you're going to need an EEPROM programmer. And but like, it's kind of like going to Ikea. You go to Ikea, you come back with like Swedish meatballs and like a, a, a look, shoe Look, I've got organizer. a new silverware holder. Yeah. <laughs> what was wrong with the old and one? And like baby toys. Yeah. It's like well, what? Don't, don't mock the baby toys there because they were... No, they're pretty good. They, especially, well, you can buy like a thousand of those balls we're for like a hundred bucks. We? It's completely unhinged. Geek Anyhow, tools. we got some geek tools for measuring that aren't as pricey as they used to be. I'm gonna skip the classic volt on meter or multimeter or multi-tester. This is like the critical geek tool used for measuring DC and AC voltage, amperage, and resistance. I'm just gonna say that my fluke worth every penny because it can hold over peak voltages when I'm testing sensors. Because the, the sensors actually switch back from their, their lowest voltage to their highest voltage a few times every second, sometimes hundreds. And they'll actually hold the peak and lowest voltage and it makes sorting out ODB2 engine errors like so amazingly easy. I, and someday I'm going to find it because it's in my garage. There's been a collapse in the garage. I don't want to talk about it. Um, I'll also mention that for basic volt, amp, and all measurements, it is amazing how accurate like a $10 or $20 digital multimeter can be. Um, the cheap ones from like insert name of like Harbor Weasel Tool and Dog Show. It's just, it, yeah. That's going to be the name of my new band. Harbor, Harbor Weasel. Weasel. Tool and dog Forget show. Forget about the gun and doll show. We've got the harbor doll weasel. Show, not oh dog my show. goodness. Well, I think I did say dog, but there's a gun and doll show band in San Francisco. Um, this is a $50 Radio Shack digital display sound level meter. It is useless for measuring under 50 dB, from, but from about 50 dB to 120 plus, it is pretty fantastic. I mean, it's amazing, like, measuring low-level dB, like anything under 50 dB or so, you really need either an anorganic chamber or a super quiet room without you inside of it to test very low noise levels, especially when you're trying to use silent PCs. One of the biggest nightmares I ever had was trying to measure a silent PC. It says A&C level waiting. It's great for setting up home theater gear or measuring the noise levels in your truck mm, before okay. you insulate it. Okay. I was going to ask the why question. Now I know. Now you know. <laughs> yeah, actually, I recently got to hang out with a couple of Hollywood sound engineering types, and they both pointed out that everybody they know in the industry has one of those in their bag that they actually use. And like the multi-thousand dollar, like it can measure, you know, the sound of a butterfly flapping its wings. Uh, sound level meter is usually like in a crate in a safe somewhere. Hmm. So I was excited. They use a $50 tool just like me. Um, infrared thermometers or non-contact temperature gauges um, used to be stupid expensive. Now they're 40 bucks online and it's uh, even less in some cheap tool stores. Um, as near as I can tell, this $60 Microtemp MT Pro has almost the same innards as a $100 Fluke model that measures a similar 76 degrees to so 392 how, how Fahrenheit. How hot am I, Patrick, huh? 89.0. Is that, is that But hot? your face? Ooh, 87 on the cheeks. The cheeks are cooling off. Oh, the cheeks are warming up. You're making me blush. <laughs> but it's actually, it'll do up to like 900 degrees, so it's good for measuring headers. Actually, I've used them a bunch for measuring... 88.6. Um, you're a hot Heat sinks on power supplies. Measure the lights. It'll go like super high. Uh, and this is exactly Whoa, what happens. If you want to go up to like 1400 degrees, you got to spend a lot more. Um, but like you start out checking a heat sink temperature, you hand it to somebody, and they do the same thing you did, which is take temperatures of everything around them. You're like the fourth person that's done this. 144. Wow, that, that light is hot. <laughs> TV. Digital calipers. Um, if you're tired of squinting to figure out how long something is or a part you're measuring, <laughs> She's measuring more. Um, it's amazing. These can be found for as little as like 12, 15 bucks on sale online, but they're essentially vernier calipers. And so we've got thousands of an inch here, or in this case, I guess hundreds of an inch. And if I switch the mode, it'll actually do fractionals and it will do millimeters. 
which I think is freaking awesome because I grew up with the little tiny veneer calipers that are a nightmare to read and I don't have much more luck with dial calipers. And I love the fact that digital calipers are super cheap now and you zero them in just like that and you can start measuring again. The inside of your ear is 90 degrees. Really? Mm -hmm. What about this here? 90.4. Interesting. I wonder if I have a fever again. And finally, because Roger and I were in Fry's and so, on my street, the muni buses mm -hmm. uh, regularly do twice the legal speed limit. So I have this dream of videotaping the muni bus going by. Um, I'm hot and fast. His, actually, just wave your hand towards it. Uh. <laughs> Hold on, let me try it again. Try it now. I hit like a girl. Uh. <laughs> you gotta go like directly towards uh. it. 14 miles an hour. Woo! 22 miles an hour. Oh, 21 miles an hour. Hold on. Uh. Gotta do it like right towards the lens. Uh. 25 miles make, an hour. I have to make a noise every time. <laughs> this is Bushnell's Velocity Speed Gun. It's 85 bucks. Um, it's not quite as addictive as a laser thermometer, but you get really, really horrified stares when you're walking down a street, or at least here in San Francisco. Well, like, yeah. And uh, Bushnell says it'll measure a ball moving 10 to 110 miles per hour from 90 feet, and a car moving from 10 to 200 miles per hour uh, from 1,500 feet, <laughs> and it's accurate to plus or minus one pile, mile per hand. hour. Turn Sorry. So. There's only one tricky part. Um, you have to, quote, keep your target's direction of travel in a direct line with you and not perpendicular to you, which is a vague way of bringing up the cosine effect, which for Doppler radar, um, if the target is in direct line, a collision course with the front of the gun, yeah. the measured speed will be exact. And the farther off angle you get, the accuracy goes down. So basically, okay, to get an exact speed number, you have to get run over. I'm or left handed. Like, I, I should have done it with my left hand. Tennis elbow? Yeah, ready? Tennis shoulder? 29 Woo! miles per hour, ladies and gentlemen. And it'll do a constant readout. So if you like ran back and forth, it would give us the measurement. If you're moving <laughs> Don't about 10 tempt miles me. an hour. <laughs> do it, do it, no, do it. No, that's all right. Maybe later. Coming up next, we're going to talk about picking the perfect uninterruptible power supply. And Veronica's search for the perfect gaming headset continues. Hey, Texilla fans. Lots of real businesses save real time and real money with GoToMeeting. Watch this real story about how San Francisco sport and spine physical therapy CEO Sturdy McKee manages six physical therapy clinics with GoToMeeting. And don't forget to sign up for a free trial at GoToMeeting.com. We're a real business and we save real time and real money using GoToMeeting. Expanding to six locations has required us to meet with managers and meet with staff more frequently so that we can maintain the consistency and the quality of our service. The reason we chose GoToMeeting was its ease of use and the flat rate fee. And can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, great. Anything else yeah, you can... Yeah, even that should have pictures, in my opinion. So whether it's me avoiding travel, or managers, or staff, it saves us time and money because we're, we're in contact with patients doing, doing work as opposed to wasting time on the road. Real business saves real time and real money with GoToMeeting. Head over to revision3.com slash GoToMeeting for the full story and sign up for a free trial. Welcome to this week's freebie download pick, a free program that we find useful, fun, or incredibly interesting. This week, Mail Store Home. Email, it's a communication standard. It's quick, it's painless, and it's easy to store until you're talking about archiving like five years worth of email. That, not so straightforward. Thankfully, there's Mail Store Home, the free app that archives your email, whether you use a simple POP3 account, IMAP-based services like Gmail, or even Microsoft Exchange. Mail Store Home can also archive email from popular clients like Outlook, Windows Live Mail, and Thunderbird. Once saved, you can browse your archived email directly, so if you ever need to find a phone number, address, or old appointment, it's a snap. So whether you want to back up your existing email or just save the old stuff, Mail Store Home is a great way to do it. Ronaldo wrote, I lost power during the recent rainstorms here in the east. No damage to the PC this time, but it made me worried about my hard drive. Any suggestions on UPSs, Ronald? His name is not actually Ronaldo, but it rolls <laughs> off the tongue so much easier. Especially when you say UPS. Ronaldo. It's like a children's story. Ronaldo and the UPS. Yeah. So, uninterruptible power supply. Do you use an uninterruptible power I supply? I don't. I don't, but after this segment, I have a feeling I'm going to want to. <laughs> they're they're kind of like surge protectors with more oomph, right? It's a really simple concept. It's a box with a battery inside of it, and when the power goes out, you connect your computer, your other equipment to it. It goes insane. <gasps> But your equipment stays powered, and if you have power <laughs> shoots set up, it'll actually automatically shut down, save out your applications, shut everything down, and give wow. you a nice, clean system shutdown instead of going like this and potentially wiping all your data. Cool. There's also usually a surge protector built in, 
And it's, it's, I gotta be honest with them, I use them uh, on my router, my cable modem, I have them for my main computer downstairs. Okay. Partially, uh, I used to live in a place where the power was horrible in Jersey, and we had like six of these protecting all the computers in the office, which is down the hall oh, from smart. my room. Um, so how long does a battery in one of these live? That's where it gets interesting. Let's, let's take a step back. We'll okay. talk about that in a second. Basically, the short answer to that is how big is the battery? And how, much, <laughs> how much money you paid and how big the battery is really determines um, how long it can run. And, of course, the equipment load. Most UPSs are offline or standby devices. That basically means when the AC goes out and falls below a certain level. Sorry about that little device box APC 700. Uh, when the AC goes out or falls below a certain level, you switch to the internal battery power as a source. Uh, I have not yet had to change the battery in this one, so. And this is basically like the one user serviceable part inside of an uninterruptible power supply. Uh, but this is a pretty large battery for a consumer power supply. Um, High-end, big location UPSs. So basically like, so for the consumer ones, there's a very fast switch and it goes, <gasps> somebody's gone horrible with the electricity and it mm -hmm. switches over to an inverter connected to the battery. High-end, big location UPSs can be double conversion. Sometimes I hear people are using these in, in high-end sort of media power supply systems. It's like $7,000 boxes. You go with your $42,000 preamp, um, in which case, Double conversion means the AC always charges the batteries, the batteries always charge the inverter or run the inverter that, that powers your equipment. And the idea is that you have super clean power, um, which is, you know, if you want to get like serious audio, uh, like a lot of serious audio geeks I've seen, they actually have like 12 volt lead acid batteries powering uh, inverters to power their high-end theater equipment, home theater, not home theater, uh, audio equipment, so mm -hmm. that they have like perfect sine wave. In any case, I like APCs, UPSs. Um, I've been using them forever. I like the UPS selector tool on the website. It lets you pick a desired runtime before pail, which brings us to, you'll like this part. If you want 70 minutes for a particular computer once you spec it out instead of 10 minutes, that's one of the differences between a $100 UPS and a $900 UPS. What? Well, if you want to... But basically, these are there's kind of like two ways of using these. One mm -hmm. is like things have gone horribly wrong, and I want a graceful shutdown of my equipment, whether I'm in the house or whether I'm somewhere. So you else. need something to alert you of yeah. that fact well, and kind of well, warn basically, you like that the power this, is out. There's <laughs> where's the plug? So this will actually have a UP, uh, UPS USB adapter. Mm -hmm. USB adapter plugs into your machine, so that when this knows that the power is out, it basically tells the PowerShoot software, the power is out, it's time to initiate a graceful shutdown. And it closes out your application, saves the files that are open, and then shuts your system down, so it doesn't do that whole, like, rip the cable out of the wall, kill your yeah. hard drive kind of thing. Um, if you want to be like, you know, I, I need this equipment to run until I am done, that's where it starts getting really expensive, because batteries get really expensive. <laughs> and that is a hefty battery. That is a hefty battery. In, 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 we actually replaced one of these with a uh, 12 volt car battery, which is generally not recommended. It's a great way to burn down your house or at least light your UPS on fire if things go horribly <laughs> wrong. But it will let you run a disco ball for days. And that <laughs> is what matters. Especially if you're in the desert. Um, I've heard good things about Belkin and Trip Light UPSs, uninterruptible power supplies too, but I, I just, I've been buying APCs for a really long time. They haven't failed me yet, so I'm sure I'm going to get 23 emails this week that tell me exactly why no one should buy APC uninterruptible power supplies because they failed on you. Um, but yeah, I like APC. Seems like a pretty good investment. I, I really, um, if you like to leave files open and mm -hmm. if you lose the work on those files, you're kind of snuffed. They're really nice. They're also, if you have bad power and like here in San Francisco, the power, the power grid's a little aged and it's a little beat up and we do these, you know, cute little rotating blackouts in hot summers. UPS, good. <laughs> Very cool. So have I finally found the perfect PC gaming headset? Stay tuned. Death, Broken Hearts, your favorite band taking a little time off to figure things out. There are bigger disappointments than getting home with a new video game and finding you just spent $60 on a DVD jam-packed full of gaming suck. I can't help you with death or taxes. My dating history makes my wife laugh. But our sponsor, Gamefly, the largest online video game rental service, they can help you avoid buying a crappy game. We're talking about thousands of new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds at your fingertips for as little as $15.95 a month. You can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as you like. 65 hours to finish that game, not a problem because Gamefly has no late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. Once you're done playing a game, send it back and Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list. You can even buy a game if you like it at a discount and they'll ship you all the stuff that was in the box. Texilla fans, you can score a 15-day free trial, but only if you sign up at Gamefly.com slash Texilla. 
Some restrictions do apply. Please see the website for details and do us a favor. Keep Techzilla coming by trying out our sponsors like Gamefly. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, GoMockingbird.com. Have you ever had that big idea for a website or application and wanted to share it with people so you can make your dream a reality? Now, thanks to Mockingbird, you can wireframe your design without needing any fancy tools and then share your design online with one click. Here's how it works. Just head over to GoMockingbird.com and hit the Try It Now button. Then start designing. The site uses the open source Cappuccino instead of Flash and loads quickly and easily. Just by dragging and dropping, you can add UI elements like search forms, drop down menus, links, tag clouds, media elements, and more. You can even work on multiple pages. Once you're happy with your wireframe, save it to your account and then share away using a simple link. You can also export your wireframes to PDF or PNG. Don't let your big ideas gather dust. Create a mock-up using Mockingbird and watch them take shape. As you may have gleamed by now, I'm something of a headset junkie. Mm -hmm. When you spend as much time as I do, quiet you, uh, sitting in front of the PC playing games, the headset I'm wearing damn well better be comfortable and sound good. And Creative announced their World of Warcraft headset last year at BlizzCon, and I've been testing them out for the past two weeks at home. They come in two versions. This is the wireless version. There's also a USB wired pair. That's a little bit on the cheaper side. And since I've never used a wireless set before, I decided to give this one a try. What? You gotta show that they they glow and they change. They colors. do. They they have these lovely little face plates on it's the like side here. It's like being at SEMA and seeing some car that slowly changes colors. Well, you can you can change the settings, so oh, really? you can have it be one sing, single color, or you can have it rotate throughout all the colors. And these face plates here are removable, so right now you can see the. Um, this is the. Lion? Yeah, this is the lion for the alliance. Blah. <laughs> and there's also a horde insignia that you can switch it with as well. And they're actually very light. They look very heavy and big, but they're not that bad. Oh, wow, these are really light. How's the audio quality? Well, the audio quality is good. I'll get to that. Give me these back. Ooh. I wanted to show off a little bit more of, the, um, of how they're made. So they've got the detachable microphone here. So very if you nice. want to have a snack and don't want your food to get on your microphone, you can detach it here. There's uh, four hours of charge time. Not that you've ever time. gotten food on your microphone. No, not that I've ever done that. I've gotten lip gloss on the damn thing like three <laughs> times already today. But anyway, um, it is wireless, so it does use up battery power as you're playing. Um, it takes four hours to fully charge, and then it plays for about nine hours of solid play time. That's not too bad. Which isn't bad at all, actually. And you can also use them while they're charging over USB. Now, OK, that was my next big yes, question. Yes, that was my first question Because you're like, to I them. Am, she'll come in and be like, what'd you do with somebody's 18 hours? You played what for how long? <laughs> <laughs> that was me this weekend, actually. I'm leveling up my, my secondary tune now to try to get her to 80. And so I was playing a lot this weekend. And this got me through the whole weekend without dying once on me. And what I love is that you can actually get up and walk around. I would go all the way to the kitchen, you know, to nuke some queso. I brought back a lot of queso with me from Austin. And I could still hear everyone in Vent talking. They couldn't hear me, though, and that's one of the downsides, but we'll get to that later. Okay. Um, let's cover the good stuff first. They sound great. Uh, as I wireless. would expect from Creative, yeah, it's uncompressed. Really? So uncompressed wireless, so very the nice. audio quality is really nice. Um, they're very comfortable. They've got this leather padding here. They can, and it's on a top. Faux leather. It's leather yeah, I guess it's. You know, I don't actually know if it's faux or real. I'm assuming I'm sure it's, it's faux. faux. It's got to be <laughs> it's right, faux. or else it'd be like five hundred dollars. Super comfortable. You can wear them for a super long time. Oh, I forgot. Hold on. I forgot that I had the voice modulation on, so as I was talking, it was piping my own voice back into my headset. <laughs> we'll get to those a little bit later. Um, it's got a pretty standard frequency response of uh, 20, 20 hertz to 20, kil 20, uh, to, you know, 20 kilohertz. Right. And, uh, the yeah. music range. The yeah. music range, <laughs> right. You can get like the, the A40s that we reviewed a couple weeks ago have a bit of a wider frequency response, but those are mostly for console gaming anyway. Um, the mic is also really nice and clear. My guildies gave it about an 8 out of 10 in terms really? of mic quality. Have they ever heard a 10? I don't know if they've ever heard a 10. Have they ever given anything a 10? I don't know what they would consider a 10. It, it would have to be like the room, like you were in the right. room with them. And uh, it was better than my other headset, which we'll show a little bit later as okay. well. Um, the cups themselves are super comfortable, like I mentioned. It's not too heavy, so you can wear it for an extended amount of time. Not bad. Um, it has volume controls on the side, which I also really like. <laughs> and runes. 
Yeah. It has these lovely little, I don't know what these are supposed to say. They look like glyphs of some kind. And you can push the volume up and down on the side here. Uh, the volume up button is a little, it doesn't push as well mm -hmm. as the volume down button, so it's a little harder to tell when you're actually pressing it. And the one thing I would have liked to have seen was a push to talk button on the actual headset. So, so if I do, mute. <laughs> if, I, if I leave, I can actually continue no, conversing no, with no, the people no. in Vent. I mean, when I'm off in the kitchen grabbing something or, you know, I have to leave my desk for a little while, I can still hear my guild mates talking, but I can't respond to them. Oh, okay. So I thought you meant like a mute your microphone. Right. If not. I use push to talk. Some people don't do that. Some people leave their mic open all the time, mm -hmm. but I think that's kind of annoying, so I don't do it. Um, so I would love a push to talk feature actually right. on the headset or at least a programmable button that I could use that Assign for. That too. Yeah. And they're also super sound isolating. Like, I can't hear anything when I'm wearing them. This is good. Yeah, so if I'm playing and if I have the volume even at a reasonable level, mm -hmm. I can't hear anyone talking to me in nice. the room. So it's super, that's nice. Um, the voice effects part is really funny. This is one of my favorite features of it. It's like the least useful feature probably, unless you're trying to actually mask this your voice. This is like the 90-second attempt to do something people enjoy with EAX. Right. Um, <laughs> let's see, I'll take the mic off and hopefully you'll be able to hear it if I put it like this. So right now, can you hear it? Right now I'm talking as Melganis. He's, a, he's, a, he's in the game. And I can change it and talk like a bunch of other characters as well from the drop down menu. I can be a children's weak orphan. And then I sound like this. And I'm really high pitched. And that's a little ridiculous. And then I can be, let's see, we'll try Let's try a gnome male. Shouldn't be that different from the Children's Week Orphan. Because gnomes suck. The Village Elder, the village elder one is kind of weird. I don't really get that one. It sounds kind of old and gravelly in a way, I guess. And then, well, the one thing I'm sad about, though, is they don't have a tauren. They have all the other, pretty much all the other races, except they don't have a female tauren, and that's what really? my main character is, and so I would love to be able to actually talk in her voice right. when I was in Vent, but they don't have that. They have a lot of different EQ settings, so you can futz around with that, too, if you, if you want to. Um, they have uh, the THX stuff, so you can add like a crystallizer or the surround sound and change the percentage on those. And then you can do key bindings, which is also pretty cool. And then there's the illumination settings, which I get a big kick out of. Although you don't really get to enjoy them when you're playing because you can't see the colors weird. changing. You could set up a very complicated system of mirrors, Maybe I suppose, you, in your gaming room. You could put your monitor on a vanity, and that way you could enjoy the... That would be weird. All right. <laughs> so you can either cycle through the colors, or you can select a specific color that you want it to be all the time. So now I have it. It should be red. Is it red? It is red. Red for the horde. Or you can change it blue for the scumbag alliance. Or and you can just blue. have it cycle through. So yeah. do anything on that whole. Yeah. Oh, wow. And it should. It, it's set to one minute, but it probably will take a little while for it to. Is it going fast? Is it changing? No, it's, it's, it's changing quite nicely. Oh, good. That's nice. It's like watching Christmas tree lights. Yeah. <laughs> so it's got some fun features. I mean, it is the World of Warcraft branded headset, right. so it's going to do some fun stuff. But there are some downsides. Uh, like I mentioned, I wish there was a push to talk button mm -hmm. on the actual headset. That would be super nice. Every so often, I hear like a little pop sound. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it has to do with the wireless or, you know, they say there's no compression, so I don't think it's anything like that. That, but I just get a little pop in in the in the right ear, and I don't really know what's causing it. And I never got that with any other headset. If, if maybe if, if a firmware upgrade makes it go away, you'll know it was a software yeah. issue. And, <laughs> <laughs> and on top of everything, they're not that cheap. I mean, the wireless version is $159 on Amazon, wow. so they're they're up there in terms of PC headsets. They, they, they change colors. They change colors, though, <laughs> right. The wired version is going to run you a little less at about 119. Um, and then you can compare them to the headset I was using before that, also from Creative, the uh, Creative Fatality. There is cat hair all over these velvet ear pads. I am so sorry. That is disgusting. But to any extent, my cats play WoW when I'm gone. I can't stop I, them. I they just, get the fur everywhere. If I come home with your cat hair on me, my cat will eat my socks. And you can tell the weight differential isn't that much. 
That's actually kind of surprising. And the the fatalities held up for you. Yeah. You're also because I I heard a bunch of people, who, a couple friends who had bought these and they kind mm -hmm. of disintegrated on them. Of course, they're also probably not as careful with their toys. As I you are. I'm I'm very careful with these. Actually, I keep them usually out of reach of all small animals and things that would want to destroy <laughs> them. Uh, these tend to heat up a little bit for me too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's the velvet difference between the faux leather, um, but these get really hot on my head after a little while. But the one thing I do like better about the fatality headset is the microphone is much bendier. Right. And so if I do want to sit there and have a snack and still be able to talk in between bites, I can just move it out of the way. This one is not quite so limber. It, it kind of moves, but it's not, it doesn't really right. stay in position. And these are, these are great. And they're, so it's probably more food resistant. That's true. Good point. <laughs> Easier to clean, get lip, lip gloss and lipstick off of them. Um, but these are only about 40, 50 bucks. Okay. So the bottom line is that if you want a really nice pair of headphones that are going to last you a long time and have some cool branded World of Warcraft features. If you're a World of Warcraft enthusiast. If you're a World of Warcraft enthusiast or just a PC gamer in general that mm -hmm. wants to have a nice, you know, creative set with Sound Blaster, these are these are great. You know, if you want to spend a little bit less money, get the wired version if wireless isn't that important to you. I gotta say, I'm impressed. If 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 you're good with the audio and you're walking like 30, 40 feet and, and with a wall between those and, oh, yeah. and the, the USB dongle, that's pretty impressive, actually. I mean, you've you've been to my apartment before. There's a good amount of, of foot space between the you know the office on one end of the apartment right. and the kitchen in the complete opposite end of the apartment, and I could hear everything perfectly. Impressive. Yeah. So not bad. Coming up next, Veronica's going to poke a hole in a Nexus One rumor, and I bet we've got some feedback from you about our little long-distance Texas Wi-Fi project. I want to thank one of our sponsors, Netflix. Ladies and gentlemen, Netflix. If you if you are the person that has not heard about Netflix, look, really simple. They deliver movies to your home. No going to the store. If you've got a mailbox, the movies arrive at your house. It takes about a day for them to get from Netflix to you, and they've got online streaming videos so you can instantly watch thousands of TV episodes and movies. They'll stream to your PC, your Mac, or right to your TV via an Xbox 360, PS3, and soon the Nintendo Wii and a whole bunch of other boxes out there. Shipping of those movies, if you do the whole Meat Space movie thing, free. No late fees, no due dates. Keep a movie for as long as you like. I've had one out for about a year now because I'm a freak that way. And you can get unlimited movies for only $8.99 a month, so you can get your movie junkie on. Just watch it, send it back, watch it, send it back, watch it, send it back. And hey, we got a good deal for you. If you're a new member and a Techzilla viewer, you can get a free trial membership. Just go to netflix.com slash techzilla and sign up now. And do us a favor, use that URL, netflix.com slash techzilla, so that we know that we sent you, not somebody else. We got ourselves a question from Efren who wrote in asking, I recently bought the Nexus One and I'm quite happy with it, but the loudspeaker has a very low volume. So low that I can't hear my phone when it's in my pocket. I've been reading in forums that a hack can solve the problem. Do you have any suggestions on how that's done? Efren. Yeah, the speakers on the Nexus One aren't exactly its strong point. I know the hack you're talking about, it's called the louder volume hack, but what I couldn't find was a way to get it working on the Nexus One, so I checked in with Darren Kitchen from Hack5 to see if he could give us a better answer. And uh, according to Darren, and what it comes down to is that the louder volume hack works on most of the Android phones, but not the Nexus One. Yeah, for some reason, the Nexus One handles audio volume completely differently from other Android phones. Hmm. I don't know why, it just does. Um, basically, you have two options. The first is to hack your Nexus One and use a ROM designed for the HTC Desire that will help boost the volume. Um, you can get more info on that from the link we're including in the show notes from AndroidAudioHacks.com. However, this is going to make the speakers sound kind of overdriven and distorted. It's going to do that like, wah, wah. Um, Alternately, you can normalize the ringer to something like 6 dBi in an audio editor like Audacity. Um, it still might sound a little bit funky, but it will be louder. Um, we'll include a link to that in the show notes as well. Um, hopefully this helps, and thanks to Darren from Hack5 for chipping in on this one. So last week we had a question about sending an internet signal a half mile up from a driveway, basically like the guest house, up to the house. A lot of you were watching and offered up your own ideas on how to accomplish this. Get your long distance Wi-Fi going. Yes. First there was Corey in Florida who recommended, Ubiquity makes inexpensive carrier class radios that work very well and are easy to set up. They have an all-in-one power over Ethernet antenna slash access points called the Nano Station M, commonly used at the customer's premise for wireless ISPs for under 100 bucks each. Hmm. They are high powered about 600 milliwatts and wow. have great reception sensitivity about negative 96 minus dbm wow negative 96 minus dbm 
Um, well, yep, like, that's never, pretty sensitive. That's actually negative 96 <laughs> dB. That is actually really sensitive. Negative 96 dBm. And since the AP and the antenna are one unit, you don't have to worry about LMR cable loss. Hmm. You could buy two of those and bridge them, and you would probably get about 80 plus megabit link. That would be really cool. Corey in Orlando. Especially if you didn't have to like think about connecting it yes. and building hardware. That would be nice. One of our Swedish viewers, Friedrich, also recommended Ubiquity Networks, but he's got a different product in mind. He says Ubiquity Networks makes these access points that have an end connector on one end and an Ethernet jack on the other. Basically, it looks like a ginormous end connector with a few LEDs on it and an Ethernet jack. It's powered over Ethernet, and because you have the access point on the antenna, you have very little signal loss. It runs Linux and is hackable as a nice web-based user interface, too. It's called the Bullet and costs around 40 bucks. That is so cool. I would recommend getting a pair of bullets and a pair of antennas to get a strong connection down to the house. Frederick that is an awesome, awesome idea. And that's actually, anytime, it's just, it's amazing how many unbelievably sophisticated, inexpensive, easy to use devices have come around like long distance Wi Fi. Nice. Especially with end connectors, you can put giant antennas on them. Fry eagles. That's yes. a joke, people. <laughs> Fry. Sarcasm. There Delicious. was some sarcasm that was missed last week, and I got a nasty email. So. Finally, we've got a microwave engineer who wrote in stating, I'm a microwave engineer and recommend the EOC 1650 access point client bridge from Ingenious. They make nice stuff, and it's cheap, too. I've actually shot a Wi-Fi signal two and a half miles, but that, of course, was up a 160-foot tower. That way, the curve of the earth doesn't get in the way. Nice. Anyways, this stuff has an integrated directional antenna, no RF cable loss, and is powered over Ethernet, not to mention it's only about 50 bucks at Tiger direct. You can configure it as a client or an access point. So you can do point to point or point to multi-point. Kevin, I want to set that up like in my neighborhood so I can Heck access yeah. my own Ethernet everywhere. That would be awesome. This could be this like mast rising up above my house with one of those on it. <laughs> that wouldn't be an eyesore at all, I'm sure. Have you seen my neighborhood? Yes. <laughs> so thanks to everyone who wrote in. The options are certainly cheaper than we expected. And if they work as well as they advertise, then Mark's friends might just be swimming in high-speed internet. Good luck. The wait is finally over. The second season of the internet sensation, Woo! Web Zero's Revision 3's first scripted sitcom begins this week. Best friends and business partners Ray, Nate, and Alex are back, reaching for their dreams of internet stardom. They want to be like Veronica Belmont <laughs> and trying not to fall over themselves in the process. Check it out every Wednesday, people. You can find it at revision3.com slash Web Zero's. And for all of you watching, we live on your questions, so email us, techzilla at revision3.com. Tech help, product reviews, how-tos, you ask us, we'll do it. But we need those emails, so don't be shy. Send them on in to techzilla at revision3.com. Or even better, send us in a video question. Think of all the fun you can have and the admiration of all your friends and family when they see your mug on our show. Just keep it to 15 seconds, make sure we can hear you, make sure we can see you, and <laughs> upload that puppy to YouTube and send us a link in an email with video question in the subject line. And as always, you can visit our forums at revision3.com forum. Share your thoughts, your ideas, your comments with other fans of the show. I suspect we're going to be doing some power over Ethernet demos in the near future. I have a feeling that may oh, be the case. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Till next time, you've been watching Techzilla. makes you crazy. Ever huff guano? I thought everybody in Modesto huffed guano. Oh, I think I'm getting a call. Did think that I... ring? No, the ringer's off, you dummy. <laughs> Way to try to ruin my segment. Anyway, hope this helps, and thanks to I'm tired. I hate this right now. Let's finish. <laughs> I will work at reading the words on the thing so we can finish.